for everybody here. I think, who has the microphone? Clay, do you have the microphone? If you have something that you would like to share, raise your hand and he'll come your direction. I just would like to share that yesterday I went through the town with lunches um, for the people who are working and cleaning up during cleanup days, Westchester cleanup days, and the church and uh, teamed up with the Lions Club and we delivered 22 lunches. Praise the Lord. Good deal. Other things that you'd like to share as announcements? Lauren and um, I think there's a total of seven people uh, in Marquette, Michigan this morning um, worshiping in church. They're up there for the action group and uh, they're going to be working all week for Habitat for Humanity in Marquette like we've done in the past. Praise the Lord. There was another one over here. I just wanted to say that our friend Larry is now at Mercy Rehab in Corville, so prayers do work. Amen. Okay, let's then begin our to uh, prepare our hearts for pr uh, the service this morning as we listen to the prelude and light the candle. Let us call each other to worship this morning by sharing number 412 and standing together. 
412. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence and will cover you with his pinions. Let us share the in the little black hymnal, number 2171. Number 2171 in the little black hymnal. It's the first time we've used it, so it's we gotta, you know, break out of the box here a bit. I know I shared this with most of you already, but uh, my grandson, Wilder, who is about six weeks old, is uh, still up at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics and is really struggling to thrive. And so if anybody could say some prayers, I would we would really appreciate it. Thank you. I bet you could hear me better if I turned it on. Yeah. Technology is such a challenge. 
Are there other things that you would like to share this morning in prayer? Praises that we could bring? Then let us join our hearts together as we draw close to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us the privilege and freedom to gather in this place to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And we do pray, Heavenly Father, that you would guide this time together by your Holy Spirit. Fill this room, Lord. Dwell among us as we worship you in spirit. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Lauren is able to be at Habitat and work with the, the mission trip there. We pray that you would continue to guide them in their efforts to share in the inner city. We think of Larry and we praise the Lord. We praise you, Lord, that now he's able to be in rehab. He's that much closer to coming home. Thank you, Lord. We think of a little wilder. Lord, fill his room with your presence, Lord, your Holy Spirit. Bring healing to that young lad. Be with his parents at this time. May they feel your hope and your joy. We pray that you'd use the doctors and the nurses and, the, and all the technicians. That you'd use them as mighty tools in your hands for Wilder's healing. And we, Lord, will give you all the honor and glory for this precious healing. Heavenly Father, as we come together, there's things that we bring that, for one reason or another, it wasn't comfortable to share. Lord, we share them from our heart in this moment of silence as we bring these petitions before your throne. Hear the prayers of our hearts. Jesus, precious name, we pray. Amen. Let us share together hymn number one. Jesus loves 191, Jesus loves me. And Anita will have a chill. Well, maybe we need kids. Jenny will be our kid. She's going to be your kid this morning. Jesus, love me, the Bible Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Jimmy, this is going to be a hard test for you. Well, maybe Kim or Clay might know it. What have we been talking about the last few weeks? And I'll give you a hint. Look up here. Yes, the armor of God. And I want to read you the verse that talks about it first. It says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And that's in Ephesians. And I want you to look at what that armor looked like. So far, 
We've talked about the um, belt of truth, which goes around the middle, and the breastplate of righteousness to protect your heart and your spirit. This week, we're going to talk about the sandals, the feet. Now, here's some sandals, but I want to tell you that the Roman soldiers' sandals had hobnails on the bottom to help them stand more firm so that they wouldn't slip and slide around. And usually they had, as you saw in the picture, straps around their legs. And the reason they wore shoes like that instead of big heavy boots is it gave them more mobility to move easier. And I want to read you the verse about the shoes from the, it's called the Complete Jewish Bible. And after I read it, you'll know why. It says, um, therefore stand, we say stand firm, but stand means you're standing there and you're not gonna move and nobody's gonna knock you over. Have the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Put on the righteousness for a breastplate and wear on your feet the readiness that comes from the good news of Shalom. Shalom? The Bible I read this morning said the good news of peace. Let's talk about the good news. What is the good news? Any of you know? What's the good news? Jesus, okay. Um, I, I know a Muslim person that believes Jesus was a really good man. Is that the good news? Okay, the good news is that he was crucified on the cross for our sins. He didn't have any sins. He took the punishment for our sins and God raised him up again. If we believe that in our hearts, we are protected and that all of this armor of God helps us. But I want to read you some things about shalom. Shalom means peace, but it's much more than peace. In Israel, people actually greet each other with shalom, shalom. Well, that's good and well, but if you think about the real meaning of shalom, it means that you are reconciliated with God. Now, reconciliated is a word you guys don't understand probably. But what it means is that you believe that Jesus died, shed his blood so that you could have eternal life and be without sin. Now, none of us are without sin. But if we believe Jesus died to take the punishment for our sins, then we're reconciliated or we are right with God. Now, we're still going to sin, but the shoes that are on our feet are going to be Help us be ready for those attacks that Satan comes at us with. Now, shoes, I like to think of shoes as walking. So we talk about talk the talk and walk the walk. So you could say, oh yeah, I like Jesus. I pray every day. But if you say that to your friend and then you go and kick him in the shins, that's not walking the walk. And that's what we have this armor of God for is to protect us from the evils of Satan. He tricks me in so many ways. And every time he does, I said, oh God, I'm so sorry. I need to buckle that belt a little tighter or make sure my shoes are hooked together well so that I can have Jesus to help me resist that. So that means that we are reconciled with God when we confess our sins and we're reconciled with each other. Now, maybe I kicked you and not him, but he didn't like me kicking you. So I need not to kick you just so you and I can be one with God, but so that he doesn't see me saying, oh, I'm a Christian, but under the table, that's not right. He has to be able to see that in me too. So we're one with each other, we're one with God, and we have peace within us because we know that God loved us so much. He gave the only most precious thing he could, and that was his son's life to take our place. And there was a price that Jesus paid for that. We just talked about it. He was spit on, he was mocked, he was beat with these awful things that had barbs in them and put scars on his back. And that was the price that God paid because he loves each other. And because he resurrected, God resurrected, rose him up from the dead after he'd been in the grave for three days. 
that's an accomplishment, isn't it? We have that accomplishment because God did it. So all of this armor is of God is to help us each day to remind us of all the things to put on for God to do. And today, it's the sandals of peace or the sandals of shalom so that we can remember to stand firm and walk. And I've actually had people ask me before, well, why do you do that? Why do you do that? I say, well, I love Jesus, and I think Jesus wants me to do that. He makes my life better. If you want your life to be better, I'll tell you how to get Jesus to make your life better. Any questions? No? Okay, let's say a quick prayer. Dear precious Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this this armor of God. And we know that we don't actually put on these things every day, that they are symbols of the things that you give us to protect us. I thank you for that, especially the sandals today, to remind me to stand firm and not give in to that temptation to kick Jenny. I just love you so much because you help me to be more like Jesus every day. In your precious name I pray, amen. Okay, you may return to your seats. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. Good job, Anita. Thank you. Now let's acknowledge the wonderful ways that God has... Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the ways you've blessed us. We thank you for this opportunity to turn back to your kingdom, part of what you've blessed us with. Guide and direct each of these gifts, ties, and offerings to exactly the spot where you would be brought the most glory and the most honor and the most praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray.
Our scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, in fitting with Anita's message this morning. That was very good. Beginning in verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm. Then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and its truth. By your will, might you use these lips of clay to share what we need to hear from your word this day. And guide us in the Holy Spirit as we receive what you've prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're spending the third week now in the armor of God. And if you have that little thing in your bulletin, we are reminded of five things. First is that God desires that we be strong. We are his testimony. We, we're, we're his witnesses. He wants us to be strong. And so God has armor for us. It's his gift. He's given to us. We do have to accept it. And we do have to don it or put it on. I use that as a trick on the name there, don it, you know. Some of the humor is a little dry, Some, a little extra dry. We also need to acknowledge that our opponent isn't flesh and blood. Our opponent isn't flesh and blood. When we go into spiritual warfare, we're not fighting people here. It's a spiritual battle. We also are acknowledging that the battleground is not earthly, it's heavenly. The battleground isn't here on uh, these wonderful cornfields or bean fields here in Iowa. It's a heavenly battle. We are called to put the armor on in order to make a stand. We're called to put on the armor in order to make a stand. It's not just decoration. It's not just because it looks good on us. We're called to put on this armor in order to take a stand, to make a stand. That first piece of armor that we worked with was the belt of truth. We talked about how it binds everything together, holds everything together. And it is necessary for us to be able to move. The second piece of the armor, that breastplate of righteousness, allows us to, in one way or another, be formed by the righteousness of God. So we start to, to not only be protected, our guts are protected by that righteousness, but we're also, in one way or other, formed by that. So this third piece of the armor, I think, probably is the most misunderstood piece. It says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Good news. I thought, Anita, you did a good job with that. 
What is the good news? It's God's story. His good news, literally. It comes in two forms. The Bible and you. The Bible and you. There's two Gospels that people will grab, grab a hold of. They will either grab a hold of the Gospel, the good news that comes from the Bible itself, from the pages, or they will see the good news lived out by you. In fact, sometimes the Gospel that they read first is the one that's setting in your shoes. Uh, good news comes from, uh, literally, the, the old uh, Gospel comes from the old... A German, high German, for good news, literally. And we just sort of gospel and it sort of carried over into the English language. What's the challenging piece to us, I think, as Christians living these days, is what is peace? Now, I imagine you think of the, at least my head always goes back to the peace rallies of the 70s and all that hippie stuff going on. And that really has nothing to do. In fact, I, there's a lot of brokenness that came out of the 70s. The wholeness God intends for us is peace. In other words, in the Jewish mindset, Shalom took us back to pre-Apple Eden. Shalom takes us back to that perfect creation that God did in the very beginning when he created man and woman in his image. The restoration of pre-apple Eden is Shalom. Can you imagine what that would be like today? Pre-apple, pre-sin pre-serpent Eden as a definition for what it would be. It would be as if we were Adam and Eve. No sin. No serpent. Yeah, we knew the tree was there. But we were walking in the garden with God. And our intimacy with God would be so close that we wouldn't be scared if he walked right next to us. In fact, we'd look forward to that intimacy with God. When we talk about shalom, when we talk about peace in the Bible, that's the word used. A word that takes us all the way back to pre-apple Eden. Now, I don't know how you come here this morning. Maybe you had a really great week, but maybe you didn't. I want you to take a moment to think about all those ways that brokenness came into your world this week. I mean, did the hogs get out? Did, did they get too hot? Did you lose some? Uh, did your car break down? Did you drop a dish in the kitchen and it just made the terrible mess all over things? Did you have an accident and you have to pick up after that? Maybe an illness in the family it caused you to have to go out of your way for one reason or another. Can you imagine then God bringing a wholeness where all those broken pieces came back together again? All those broken pieces came back together. I've known a lot of people who have gone through trials and tribulations yet they had this peace in the midst of the trial and were able to live it out shalom is a in the old testament it's talked about like joshua made a treaty with them so that they could live he brought safety to their family and to the nation of israel at that time the friendship covenant between people and god talks about a time in Numbers chapter 25, 12, where therefore I will tell him I am making a covenant of peace with him. 
his descendants will live in that covenant. Can we imagine what it would be like to live out this, this wholeness into our daily lives as a salve to the people around us? It's more than tranquility and contentment. In Isaiah 32 it says, The fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. When Jesus was talked about coming in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the New Testament, Irene is the word used in the Greek. And in John, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. In John 16, I have told you all things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. In Romans 5, verses uh, 1 and following, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his, this grace in which we now stand. In Philippians 4, it says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So why, out of this armor, or is it shoes that represent the readiness of the gospel of peace? Anita hit it right on. It's so that as we move into the world, they see that something else is a part of our lives. That knowledge of knowing that Jesus Christ is willing to bring us peace, wholeness, in the midst of all the brokenness that's around us, creates in us a readiness to move, if need be. And even more importantly, Take a stand where we're at. Now, I don't know whether you're into spiritual warfare and that kind of thing. And if you've had a demon, we'll bow at you lately. But one of the things that we must have as Christians in the midst of the spiritual warfare that's around us is a knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Lord and risen Savior. That he willingly went to the cross because he loves us. And he wanted to restore us back to the pre-apple Eden that's intended for us. That means if we come this morning and we're broken, maybe there's pain in our life, maybe there's been a hurt come our way, Jesus offers us by his love, his self as an offering, all we have to do is accept it and put it on. Put it on. If you know that, then you have it ready. That's what creates in us a readiness to be able to share with somebody else this wonderful Savior that has transformed our lives, that allows us in the midst of the pain and aggravation that comes our way, to be able to stand for him. Because we know that our peace comes through him no matter what happens on this earth. We know that someday we're going to share eternity with him. We know there's a better future in store. 
So when we come across an individual who's struggling with their marriage and not knowing what to do, we can share with them hope. That Romans chapter 5 passage, I find very important. Because it's one of those, like James chapter 1, that shows us this, this Christian life is a progression of walking with Him. In Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore, and I've read part of it already, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace through God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Really? Because we know that suffering develops perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, that's still reading, still reading scripture here, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We who understand that, dawn The, shod, the, 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 uh, the sandals of peace. Because we know that it is Jesus Christ who makes us whole. And the peace that comes to the Christian is only through Jesus. And we can stand firm in that peace. It's Jesus who makes us whole. It's Jesus who makes us ready to stand. No matter what comes in our direction. In Isaiah chapter 26. Verse 3 it says. And it came to me in my mind so I wrote it down at the bottom. He will keep in perfect peace. Whose mind is is stayed on thee. Look it up in your own translation. It says a little different. But if we can remind ourselves that the peace that comes to us comes through God, through Jesus Christ. So this coming week, I, I always know this happens when I preach something like this. This coming week, when you have a trial or tribulation come your way, and there's people watching, I pray that you grab the opportunity to stand in the situation with the peace of Jesus Christ guiding your words and your actions. That the honor and glory and praise comes to Almighty God. Now, I won't be here next week, but I hope and pray that in the sharing time of concerns and praises, you can share those opportunities you were given to stand firm with the gospel of the readiness, readiness of the gospel of peace. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, you've called us to be your people. And that was good. You've called us to follow your son, Jesus. And that's even better. You sent your son into this world, 
not only to teach us the ways, but ultimately to die upon the cross to make us broken folk complete again. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us our sins. Thank you for bringing wholeness into our broken lives through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit who directs us in, our, in these times. So, Lord, now let us be ambassadors of your good news. And live at peace with not only you, Lord, but be ambassadors of shalom in a broken world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and join together in the closing hymn. Number 431 in the blue hymnal. Four hundred and thirty one in the blue. Isn't that the one? Did I put something else in the bulletin? Oh, mercy, I did. Three hundred and seventy seven. No, Nancy, you're correct, and I'm wrong. Oh.
Now may the peace of Jesus Christ go with you always.